Hello, this is Brett Etheridge, founder of Dominate the GMAT, and I'm going to show you how to solve a typical GMAT problem-solving question involving distance, rate, and time. For more sample questions and tips like this, visit dominatethegmat.com. Now before I dive in, I'd like to give you a chance to solve this question on your own. So if you haven't already done so, press pause, and give it a try on your own, and see how you do. All right. There are really three major types of distance rate time questions, and this is what we call an opposite direction question. Now, it's a little bit tricky because they're obviously not going in opposite directions. They're converging, but the way that we solve these questions is the same. First things first, you always want to start by being very clear about what the answer choice is going to look like. And the problem is asking how much further, farther, driver A is traveling than driver B. In other words, what is the answer actually going to look like? Well, driver 1's distance minus driver 2's distance will actually give us the answer. So this is ultimately what we're trying to solve. So that should give you a sense of what you actually want to then look for. We need to find the distance driver A travels and the distance driver B travels. Now this is not a good candidate for working backwards because we're actually asked to find a difference. So it's not like we can just plug in one of these numbers. Now for opposite direction questions, here's essentially what's going on, and you always want to draw a diagram. We have driver A, who is heading down the highway in this direction, and then we have driver B, who is driving down the road towards driver A in this direction. Now of course the problem says that driver B waits an hour, and we'll deal with that in a moment, but the reason we call this opposite direction question is because it creates a linear distance from each other. And the way we solve these questions is always the same. Whether they're converging or going in opposite directions, the way we solve them is to recognize that D1 plus D2 equals total distance. And that's important to understand. And that's the same thing here. Even though they're converging, what do we know? We know the problem tells us that the total distance traveled is going to be 770 kilometers because that's how far apart they are when they start. Now, driver A will have actually traversed a little bit further. If the midpoint is approximately here, the question is essentially asking, what is that distance? How much further is driver A traveling? And so if D1 plus D2 equals the total distance, let's find D1. And remember the distance rate time formula is that distance equals rate times time. And so that's a formula you should obviously know. And in this case, driver A, I'm just going to call that driver 1, just to stay consistent. Driver A, his rate and his time is what? So his distance is rate times time. Well, we're told that his rate is 90 kilometers an hour, and his time is? Well, we don't know. So that's the variable, time t. Likewise, driver B, who we're going to call D2, his distance is also rate times time, but it's a different rate and it's a different time, isn't it? His rate is 80 kilometers an hour, and what's his time? Is it the same amount of time? Do we use T just like we did for driver A? No, because he drives an hour less, and so his time is actually T. We need to use the same variable, but T minus 1 minus one hour. And we subtract one because the units are hours. The units is in hours. And that's consistent because we're given kilometers per hour as the rate. And so hour is the unit. And so we simply subtract one to represent one hour. And then I said that the way we solve this is to recognize that D1 plus D2 equals total distance, which is 770. In other words, 90T plus 80t minus 1, so I'll go ahead and distribute that as 80t minus 80 is going to equal 770. And of course we can combine 90t plus 80t to get 170t. And then of course add the 80 to both sides. So on the right side of the equation now we have 850 kilometers. And so of course we divide by 170, divide by 170, and we end up that t, time, is 850 divided by 170, which is just 5, or 5 hours. So we have solved for time, which is helpful. But remember back in the beginning, we already determined that what we really need to answer the question is distance 1 minus distance 2. And so what's distance 1? Well, distance 1 
is simply 90t. We already determined that that's the individual equation for driver A. So 90t, well in this case t is 5. So 90 times 5 is, do the math, 9 times 5 is 45 out of 0, so 450. And then driver 2's distance is 80t minus 1. Well, t is 5, but minus 1, so that means it's 80 times 4. So that is 320, right? Because 8 times 4 is 32, add the 0, 320. So what ultimately is the answer then? D1, which we determined is 450, minus D2, which we determined is 320, which is, lo and behold, 130, or answer choice B. So well done if you got that, and hopefully now this problem makes a lot more sense. You may see a question like this where they actually start at the same point and go in opposite directions, but converging works the exact same way, and the formula you want to make sure that you're using to solve these questions is D1 plus D2 equals total distance, and you now see how to solve it. Again, for more tips like this, visit Dominate the GMAT, and again, I am Brett Etheridge.